Today's lesson is on the alternating series test, and we're gonna talk about absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. The alternating series test is actually a pretty simple one to run, but it has to be on an alternating series. So an alternating series is uh, terms alternate between positive and negative, and we call it an alternating series. The test, uh, the alternating test shows that a series converges if two things are held, that the limit of the nth term goes to zero, and that for any term, it is less than the term before it. What we're gonna do here, this means that it's strictly decreasing, and we have a tool that we can use to determine if something is decreasing. We're going to use the derivative. Because if the derivative is negative, that means it's going to be decreasing. So let's see one of these. So we've got an alternating series. This part here, the negative 1 to the k plus 1, is going to make it so that it alternates between positive and negative. So we're going to do two things. First, we want to see if the limit is 0. So we're going to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k. Does that go to 0? Yes, it does. Second, we're going to look at is this strictly decreasing? So we're going to look at the derivative of 1 over k, which is negative 1 over k squared. Well, no matter what I plug in here for k, this is going to be less than 0, which means it's always decreasing. So this one is convergent. Okay, I want to make a note here. Okay, 1 over k is the harmonic series, and that diverges. What we just showed is that if we make it an alternating harmonic, it converges. So the harmonic series, 1 over n, diverges. On the other hand, the alternating harmonic series with our alternating piece of 1 over k is always convergent. And this is something that we can hold true. So you can always say, and we're going to use this a lot in the next uh, unit, um, but we know this one always converges and we know this one always diverges. So let's look at some other alternating series. Let's look at the next one. So first is the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 4 over k squared plus k. Does that? Yep, equals 0. Okay, then we're going to take the derivative. This derivative is going to require the quotient rule. So I'm going to have k plus 4 prime times k squared plus k minus k squared plus k prime times k plus 4 all over k squared plus k squared. All right, so we're going to do some work on the top here. Derivative of k plus 4 is just 1, so we'll have k squared plus k there minus 2k plus 1 times k plus 4. I'm going to FOIL this. Okay, so I'm going to have a k squared minus 2k squared. 
so that's going to be minus k squared. I'm going to have a 9k here, so k minus 9k is going to be minus 8k minus 4. So for k values being bigger than 1, this is always going to be negative on the top and positive on the bottom. So this will always be negative, which means this series converges. So let's look at the limit as k goes to infinity of k squared plus 3 over k squared plus k when I multiply that in. Well, that equals 1. If the limit is not 0, then this series diverges. Whether it is alternating or not, it fails the divergence test. Uh, down here, which of these following series converge? Well, negative 1 to the 1 is just going to be negative 1 plus 1 minus 1. So that will diverge. Uh, negative 1 to the 2n. Well, that's going to keep alternating, but it's just going to be 2n, not 2n, 2n, not 2n. This limit is not 0 diverges. This is e. So the limit as this goes to infinity would be e, which also diverges. So the answer here is none. Next we're going to talk about the alternating series error bound. So if an alternating series satisfies the conditions of the alternating series test, uh, and the sum of the series is approximated by the nth partial sum Sn, the error between the actual sum and the partial sum is going to be less than a n plus 1. So if you have the sum of the first four terms, the error is going to be less than the fifth term, uh, where the sign of the error is the same as the coefficient of a, uh, a n plus 1 in the series. Um, so I'm going to illustrate this with an example. So we're going to look at the alternating harmonic series, uh, and we're going to approximate this sum um, um, with the partial sums, and then we're going to look at the error bound. Okay, so if I add 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth, and you can use a calculator, you're going to get 7 twelfths. Okay. I'm going to write out the series with more terms so I can illustrate what we're actually doing here. So minus one fifth plus one sixth minus one seventh plus one eighth and so on. Okay, the sum, no four, the sum is this infinite series. Okay, well, it's difficult to add an infinite number of things, uh, so we're approximating that by adding some of the terms. So we added this many terms to approximate that. Okay, so we said this is 7 twelfths. I got my sign thrown. Sorry, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Sorry. Anyway, this is S4. Okay, but it's not accurate, right? It, it's, a, it's an approximation, but it's not exact. So how far off is it? Well, we didn't add in all of these terms here. But if we look at this, we've got 1 fifth minus 1 sixth, so it's going to get smaller, plus 1 seventh minus 1 eighth plus 1 ninth. So the biggest thing here is 1 fifth, and then it just keeps getting smaller from that. So we can say that the error has to be less than or equal to the next term in the sequence, which is a 5. So for this, we're saying that the error is less than 1 fifth, because these things added up will be less than 1 fifth. So my error, how far this estimation is off, is less than that 1 fifth. So in the alternating series, it's always the next term. Okay, what if we added seven terms? Again, you can use your calculator. So S7 is going to be 319 over 420. So my error 
is going to be less than or equal to A8 So the error, if I add seven terms, is going to be less than one-eighth. So we'll get within one-eighth of the actual sum. Okay, estimate the error that results if the series sum is approximated by the fifth partial sum. So the error will be less than or equal to, if we're adding five, a six, so my error is going to be less than or equal to 1 over 6 factorial. Which is going to be 1 over 720. Alright, so now we're going to look at what it is the smallest number of n for which the partial sum approximations for the sum of the series is to the stated accuracy. So we have the alternating harmonic series again, and we're looking for how many terms do I need to add where the accuracy is within 0 0.0001. So what we're saying is that the nth term is less than or equal to 0 0.0001. Well, if this is my series, I'm looking for one over n plus one, to be less than 1 over 10,000. Well, that means I want n plus 1 to be greater than or equal to 10,000, which means the number of terms I need to add, which we're just going to make this equals, 9999, 9, 9, 9, terms. If I add those up, we will be accurate within 1 10,000th uh, of a decimal point there. How about this one? So I want 1 over n plus 1 cubed to be greater than or equal to 1 thousandth. Sorry, that should still be this way which means n plus 1 squared will be greater than or equal to 1,000. If I take the cubed, cubed root of 1,000, we're going to get 10. So n is going to equal 9. If I add 9 terms, we will be within 1 1,000th accuracy-wise. Okay, now we're going to talk about absolute convergence. We've seen in the harmonic series that the harmonic series diverges, but its alternating series converges. That's going to be called conditional convergence. Absolute convergence is going to happen when both the positive series and the alternating series converge. So what we're going to look at is really, does this converge? So 1 over 2 to the k minus 1, well that's just an infinite geometric series with a common ratio of 1 half, which means this is going to converge. And if the positive series converges, the alternating series converges. So this absolutely converges. Okay, this one, it looks kind of funny, but cosine k pi, if I plug in a 1, it's going to be pi, which is negative 1. If we plug in 2, we'll have 2 pi, which is 1. So this is just negative 1 to the k. So it's just another way to write an alternating series rather than using one of these, is you can use cosine or sine to do it. So we're looking at does 1 over k squared. Well, that's a p series with p equaling 2, which is greater than 1. So this series converges. Uh, absolutely again. Okay, 1 over k 
is harmonic. So it diverges. So this series does not converge absolutely. Okay, we can use the ratio test for absolute convergence. So it's basically going to work like the ratio test. We're just going to take the absolute value of the top and bottom. So we're going to have the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative 1 to the k plus 2, 2 to the k plus 1, over k plus 1 factorial all over negative 1 to the k plus 1 2 to the k over k factorial. Well, and this is really going to be the last time I'm going to do the absolute value. All the absolute value does is it gets rid of our alternating piece. So this is just equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of 2 to the k times 2 to the 1 over k plus 1 times k factorial and then times k factorial over 2 to the k just like we've done a bunch already. So we're left with the limit as k goes to infinity of 2 over k plus 1. That limit equals 0 which is less than 1, so this converges absolutely. Okay, so if the absolute value of the series converges, both the positive and alternating series converge. Okay, so let's do another one of these. So this is really just going to look like the regular ratio test, I'm just going to drop this because if I take the absolute value, that's going to go away. So this is going to be k plus 1 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial all over k to the k over k factorial. And hopefully this looks familiar. We've actually done this one before. So this is going to be k plus 1 to the k times k plus 1 over k plus 1 times k factorial times k factorial over k to the k. Okay. Those go, those go. So we have the limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 1 to the k over k to the k, since they have the same exponent. We can rewrite this as k plus 1 over k to the k. Another way to look at this is 1 plus 1 over k to the k, which is e. e is greater than 1, so this diverges. Okay, and it diverges both because the limit of this is going to go to infinity anyway, so both of them diverge. Conditional convergence I talked about with the alternating series. A series is conditionally convergent if the alternating series converges, but the absolute value of the series diverges. So we're asked for two things, or three things. I'm going to have some series, and we're going to say, are, is the series absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent? Okay, so just to restate what these mean, if they're absolutely convergent, both the alternating series and the positive series converge. Conditionally convergent, the alternating series converges, but the positive series diverges. 
and divergent means they both diverge. So let's look at this guy. We're first going to look at does this converge? Absolutely. Okay, well I'm looking at the series of L and K over K. Really anytime I've got like a one over something and a natural log, we're gonna be using an integral test. So let's run an integral test. Okay, so I'm gonna do the integral from three to infinity of the natural log of x over x dx. Now you can use the limit stuff or limits this time. I'm gonna let u equal ln x, which means du is one over x dx. So this integral is now the integral from three to infinity of x, or u, du. Integrate that, we're gonna have one half u squared from infinity. So we're gonna have one half ln x squared from three to infinity. So we're gonna have the natural log of infinity squared minus the natural log of three squared. This is gonna go to infinity, so this diverges. Okay, so it is not absolutely convergent, but it could still be conditionally convergent. So for the conditional, we're going to go back to the alternating series test. So does the limit as k goes to infinity of the natural log of k over k? Polynomials are always going to grow faster than logs, so this will be zero. Then we're going to look at, is it strictly decreasing? So we're going to look at the derivative of L and K over K using the quotient rule. So we're going to have the derivative of L and K, which will be one over K times K minus the derivative of K, which is one times the natural log of K over k squared. Well, this is going to be 1 minus the natural log of k over k squared. Well, is this positive or negative? If we look at the values we're plugging in, we're plugging in values bigger than 3. So this would be 0 when k is equal to e. So it's going to be negative when k is greater than e. And since we're plugging in values bigger than 3, it passes. So this is going to be less than 0. So this is not absolutely convergent, but it is conditionally convergent. Next one, let's look at does it converge? Absolutely. Well, does the series 1 over 5 to the k converge? Sure does. This is an infinite geometric series. Common ratio of 1 third. So since this converges, this one converges absolutely. The positive series converges, so the alternating series would also converge. So absolutely convergent. This next one, we're going to look at does the series e to the k over k? Well, if I look at the limit as k goes to infinity of e to the k over k, that exponential is going to grow way faster. So this is going to be infinite, so it's going to diverge 
and I don't even have to check if it's conditionally convergent because it's going to fail the first part of that test too because we're just going to repeat this. So this one diverges. So that is alternating series uh, and absolute and conditional convergence.